Welcome back to the Single Malt Review with a quick update on our blind taste testing game we've got going here with our Secret Spirits Advent Calendar. Yes, indeed. It should be, um, assuming our, our clocks are set correctly, it should be sort of Christmas Eve mm. around the world here. We've um, just tried our 24th dram, yes. and absolutely um, a real, real tongue-spankingly old um, single grain from Inver mm. Gordon. Who, who could see that coming? Um, I could see it was grain coming, but um, <laughs> not much else, as um, as uh, theory would prove. Yeah. So, uh, still can't get George Dawes on the line, so Dave is just going to have to run you down the scores. Mm. So, as before, we've been scoring on three fronts, guessing the uh, nature of the spirit, which region it's from, and which distiller. Mm. After the first 12 drams, we were tied exactly eight points apiece. Now, though, after the second half, the scores have drifted out a bit. I have a grand total of 14 points. Tim is way up on 19. Got a it's bit, a lucky, nice, bit yes. lucky with a couple of threes there, made mm. all the difference. Filled in the um, holes I've dug for myself with those couple of yeah. zeros. So my scores, I have had, like, whew, what have we got? Yeah, one point, one point, zero, one, and two. Then for day 23, what did I have there? Another two. Uh, there, it was another yes. two, yes indeed. So um, two fairly high scorers, but one so yeah, you were done, like, done, done wrong by a yeah. surprisingly youthful and um, hmm. surprisingly youthful and surprisingly fruity, surprisingly, as it would transpire, um, malta-like um, North British sweet mm. grain. That one really threw me... Uh, Far less traditional, yeah, than the, yeah, the one we last yeah. tasted, with its usual sort of um, its usual confected, mm. confected uh, appearance. Yeah, you, however, had uh, points on every day. You had no zeros this time, so no, each... I left left my yeah. zeros behind me. Mm. Thankfully, you had for well, your guesses. You had uh, one point, three, two, three, one. And what was your one for day uh, That was finally a one, one. for the uh, That's it. for the so, Inver Gordon. Just for to refresh my memory, I'm going to see what you scored a perfect three points on. Ah, oh, I remember that one. Yeah. I can tell you there. That was um, Ardmore yep. for the first one, and then I got a Colilo. Yeah. And they were. Um, I suppose I can I can reveal I can reveal my pocket malts now because mm. they're not coming up anymore. Well, I suppose one might be um, the malts that I can when pressed semi-reliably guess are as follows. And let me know if you think that, if you uh, agree with this. I can almost always guess Ardmore, assuming it's mm. typical Ardmore, because that peat manifests almost nowhere else. Um, you might get a funny mm. sort of a Ben Romick if it was a bit higher on the peating level, but still, there's just something about Ardmore. It's so unique what it does. Still, this Ardmore, though, was unique being matured in the ex Lafroy yes, cast. Yes, so that's what so impressed me, but you got it. Was, it was slightly, I still don't know how much of an effect that, because you're putting, you're putting peated whiskey mm. in a peated cask. I don't know yeah. what happens then, whether it cancels each other out or really what, what goes on. Um, the other one is Kleinleash, which hasn't come up yet, mm -hmm. and that's because of that incredibly, that's the texture of Kleinleash. Um, I much, much prefer it and can guess it much, much easier if it arrives in bourbon matured format. I think that's the, that is the natural form of Kleinleash. It makes it much harder if it's sherry matured, um, but Kleinleash has not, and unless it's going to show up for the last one, it's not going to feature, feature in this one. Mm. Um, I can, on a good day, pick um, Springbank because of that very, very typical sort of funkadelic goodness. Mm. I'm pretty good with Abelura for reasons I can't even describe now that I think mm. about them. I just have this feeling when I'm tasting Abelura whiskey. I think it's um, because it, um, it, it releases so much sort of um, normal blends and also so much of the big first fill sherry with its abuna that we've enjoyed so much over the years. Um, it's, uh, you get a good uh, broad spectrum of what that one produces. And the last one I can sometimes pick, and that was that's as a sometimes now, is that Colila because it has such a um, distinct lemon citrusy note and it is far and away, and I mean far and away, the most commonly independently bottled Isla single malt. And I don't know exactly why. I know it produces a lot of whiskey, so um, there's that, and it doesn't have that sort of royalty factor that things like Ardbeg, Lefroig kind of things have. There's two distilleries on Isla that show up nine times out of ten in independent bottles, and they are Collier and they are Bunnerhaben. Bunnerhaben um, typically not peated, so that makes it way, way, way harder to pick. <laughs> Collier 
almost always beat it. And in fact, I've never tried. Someone on earth may have tried an unpeated um, Colila, but it sure as hell isn't me. Um, but yeah, even more than Bunnahabhan, seems to be the ones that escape the reservation and appear in independent bottles. Independent bottles, the heart of blends in... Um, we've tried things like Portiskeg mm. and Finlagen, and there's debate. There's debate about what's actually in those, whether it might be one thing or the other. I'm almost always convinced it's Colila, mm. and yeah, there's just a, there's a ubiquity to it, which makes it sort of a like a meta guess, I suppose. But anyway, and that that really is all of them. Um, I mean, I'd like to think I could probably do a um, Glen Farkless, but you're never going to get a Glen Farkless, so I suppose that kind of nullifies mm. itself. And the rest, it's all diminishing returns from there on. And so that's um, a literal handful of distilleries in an mm. ocean. So there is not a great many um, out there that are sure picks, but I'm very, very glad that um, the Ardmore, if there was one I was really going to kill myself over, really going to be crushed, if I missed, it was the Ardmore. Mm. Um, and I almost did, because I almost... Um, did myself because I'd already picked it and got it wrong, and that that almost diddled me on that one because I I was I was shook I was shook on the Ardmore pick mm -hmm. after that one. And it didn't it help when out. I when I said it may have been when I looked at the label and said oh it's going to be something which is both familiar but mm. with a twist or words to that effect. Yeah. But it's um, a few of the highlights from the latter yeah. half of the calendar. We've got half, half two four highlights. picks here in chronological order. Coming in on day thirteen, the twenty-one year old Aaron. I did not guess very well on this one, but it was a lovely dram, yeah, a well, refill barrel. Aaron, I've described the um, I've described the, uh, the the pocket whiskies, the easy to pick. Mm. The abject nightmare hell whiskies are another problem, mm. and Aaron leads the pack on that one because it is a island whisky made in such a studiously mm. Speyside style that it is an absolute trap. Um, I don't think I could have ever ever picked an Aaron. I don't think I could do it. You could show me the label, I'd still call you <laughs> Speyside. They just make it in such a faithful character mm -hmm. to Speyside that it is the doom of the islands. Mm -hmm. I would rather taste a Talisker and Le Chig ten times over than try mm -hmm. to guess a Jolly Aaron. But Aaron's are consistently excellent, but there can be such stark flavour differences from one to the next based on barrel type and mm -hmm. so on that they can just vary so wildly from each other. But what it was was absolutely delicious. That mm -hmm. was one of the first really um, eye-popping, both old and just incredibly good mm. on its own merit. Also eye-popping, but not old, was Day 20, the seven-year-old Kaoila. Yeah. Which was, again, their first fill. That, that one is still so close, yeah. not just because I picked it right, so close to being one of my favourite ones here. Mm. It's just such an active cask, and it's such a, such a forthright and stupidly mature whiskey for seven years yeah. old. Um, despite getting the distillery pick on this, I got almost every single other thing wrong. I guess mm. this as being... Up of upwards of 18 years old, um, which, I mean, that's very old for Isle of Whiskey. I should have probably checked myself there, but I also thought it was bourbon. So um, it was certainly a case of so wrong yet so right. If we were doing more technical picks, I would have completely bombed on this one because I was flabbergasted to see the age of this one, the strength of this one, and the wood as well. Uh, but all up, it's one of the most sort of cracking Colilas um, outside of mm. some really stupid ones at tastings, you know, they'll show up and they'll be 28 years old or whatever and they'll be, you know, absolutely divine. But you, one, you know, mortal, mortal men can't afford such whiskey day to day. So, um, yeah, that's, young Colilo is what you get and that one is just a mm. cracking example. And the final two here are from the final two days of a tasting, aptly. From day 23, 21-year-old Glen Spey. This is distilled way back in 1997, matured in a sherry butt but still coming in strong at just over 59%. This was one that I more or less... Uh, well, actually, it was one of my stronger guesses for... Uh, uh, yes, it was, it was yeah. very solid too. Like I said at the time, mm. um, it was uh, probably one of the easier twos and one of the harder threes mm. because um, Speyside's just an absolute cluster, literally. And also, having never tried a Glen Spey before, as far as I can yeah. remember. But this one was just such a... In addition to being such an old whiskey, 21 mm. years old, um, such a Speyside ensemble. I think yeah. of all of the ones we've had, um, this one is maybe some of the truest to region that we have gotten thus far. Um, the grain whiskies aside, which are sort of in their own way regionless, but 
yeah, it was in terms of one, like I say, easy two because this one just screams space side. There's everything that is good about the region going on with that. It's a gentle, slow, smouldering space side, not an immediate yeah. wallop of. It's just like the just like the liquid. It's in no hurry. Um, yeah. It's been around a long time, and it's going to take its time. It delivers a lot of flavour, intense spiciness, and a lot of fruit, but does it gently and then mm. in. Portions. And for our, our mm. final pick for the second half was literally the last whiskey we tried. Mm. It was the strawberry fondant icing. Um, is fondant and icing a bit of an oxymoron at that point? I, I guess don't know. all fondant is icing, but not mm. all icing is fondant. Gotcha there, means maybe. <laughs> we'll see. Um, 29 year old single grain from Invergordon, mm. um, of which I was able to pick a scant one of these aspects, but um, I managed that mm. at least. At uh, 46, which, given the age, is probably not far from the far from the actual <laughs> truth. I don't think it would have been um, terrifically higher given the given the advanced years. And that one, yeah, literally the last one we tried, and just um, just like the last one was a, the Glens Bay was an ensemble of all things mm. by side. This really was a super typical and super delicious grain whiskey yeah. um, with just that sort of saucy ice cream, rum and raisin kind of a thing going on. It's a real um, masterclass in grain whiskey yeah, in yeah. a convenient 50ml um, bottle. I should say, in addition to the you know the pocket picks, grain whiskey, once it's of those advanced age, um, that advanced age, that's definitely one of them. Um, not insofar as being able to say where it came from, mm. but it's certainly being able to identify the spirit because it almost doesn't seem to matter where grain whiskey is produced. This is, seems to be where it wants to go. This sort of flavour profile is where they always end up, and the older they get... It's like all grain whiskey roads lead to that bottle, basically. That bottle and very, very similar whiskey. They all go to the same place, unless they're very, very, very strange, or they've been in a very, very strange cask, which this one sort of was. It was a sherry butt, and not a hell of a lot of grain goes into sherry wood, because that was, you know, why waste your sherry wood on grain whiskey, which is perfectly happy going into bourbon. Why not age your super... Um, in demand malt whiskey in there, so who knows? Who knows? <laughs> maybe, maybe this was um, this was really the whiskey boom was only just beginning here. Yeah, maybe they were flicking their whiskey into any old wood back then. They just didn't even didn't even care, didn't even know. Um, but we were very very lucky to have this one um, survive all this time mm. to be tasted now. And um, having a having a sneaky peek through the archives of some, mm. uh, Secret Spirits who has, I should uh, not forget to mention, kindly provided the calendar for yeah. us this year, allowing us to come along on the adventure. Um, having a pick at their uh, spoilers page for what has been in their previous um, previous calendars, um, I don't think this is going to be the oldest whiskey we see out of mm. this box, unless they break with tradition, because um, if memory serves going down their various lists, none of their Christmas Day whiskeys has been under 30 years so old. Whatever it so is, it's going to be kind of amazing. We're basically going to be a good portion of the show. Like, there's no way, even if I was to guess a 25th whiskey completely right and Tim got it completely wrong, I would still be behind on points. So Tim has definitively won Christmas mm. on this front. So However, we're the, both um, going to go in blind. We will taste the 25th whiskey without seeing the label. And see what we can see both what, see what together or separately. Eek out, eek out. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I suppose we can we can come to the same or separate yeah. viewpoints if we feel strongly. We'll just have to um, we'll have to see where we end mm. up, and it's going to be a hell of a conclusion for what has been a hell of a month oh, yes. of absolute breakneck tasting. So thank you very much for um, sticking around all this time. You must be absolutely sick of seeing our faces <laughs> by now every single day. Can you imagine? I don't even want to see myself every single day. Um, Boy, but if, if you have stuck around, then thank you very much. We oh, have yeah. had some of the most tremendous engagement from the community mm -hmm. that we have, honestly, I think, ever had. Um, fairly easy to say. Uh, there's just been people coming out of the woodwork with some just tremendous, tremendous mm -hmm. commentary, which is not something you can say mm -hmm. about YouTube most days of the week. And uh, this calendar so has simply been just non-stop. Well, honestly, fun. Yeah, it has been so much fun. It the has whiskey been so has been fun. educational, it's enlightening. Some cases it's completely new, completely confounding. It has been really a journey. Yeah. Even it, is, um, it has put us through our paces like yeah. absolutely nothing has in the past. So, yeah, no, really, really chuffed mm. uh, to do this one this year. So, um, without further ado, bring on Christmas Day. Mm. One more sleep. Watch out, Father Christmas. Gonna get you um, the moment you close your eyes. And so are we. We will be here early, fresh, crisp Christmas day with the last dram. Mm. Catch you then. Slanger, this has been the Single Malt Review. We'll be here very, very shortly.